our next speaker uh, is right here uh, on the East Coast as well. She's down in Georgia, so Powder Springs, Georgia specifically. And so Sasha Johnson, I want to welcome you to BSN Spotlight. Uh, thanks for being here and uh, tell the people a little bit about yourself. Well, first, thank you for having me. A little bit about me is I am a licensed psychotherapist. I actually work with people in the community of Alabama, Georgia, and California. Um, I am from Montgomery, Alabama, and I am considered to be a trauma and relationship expert. I have been working in this field for about eight years, have experience with the prisons, jails, schools, you name it, I've done it. I'm also an author, radio host, and oh my goodness, I wear so many hats. I have an, uh, in, uh, a private practice called Inside and Out Consulting and a nonprofit organization that I focus on emotional support for men and for women. So I have a lot of amazing things that I'm trying to do to support and help um, alleviate the issue around our mental health stigmas. Yes. Sasha, first of all, I am amazed that you have time to be here on this interview because you are busy. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> thank out. you for having me. <laughs> no problem. No problem. So I, let's dig into a little bit of this. Uh, you mentioned uh, that uh, you've uh, done uh, you have at least eight years of experience uh, in, in the mental health um, realm. What got you fascinated um, with because uh, I, you know, I think there's a difference between saying, hey, you know, I just want to be, you know, a therapist or a counselor um, or, you know, a coach in a mental health space. But you're not only in addition to having your own private practice, you're also, you know, providing training. I know you're partnering with law enforcement. You're doing so much. So, like, what was it that got you passionate about serving in this space? If I be honest, it was the trauma of it at first for me. It was personal. Um, I had a mother who was suffering with some mental um, issues and it was affecting me during high school times mostly. And during that during that time, it was really really difficult for me to understand what was going on in the dynamic of our home. And so I just refused to accept that it's just you know I you know I didn't understand what was going on. I needed to know what was going on. I needed to learn. I needed to get the knowledge behind why my mom was experiencing what she was experiencing so that hopefully one day I could help her at least guide her in the right direction. Wow. Uh, it starts at home. Yeah. I, I think so often, you know, we have something that our loved ones have experienced and certainly we can experience things ourselves, but that kind of becomes uh, a calling um, to, you know, go out and into the world and ensure that, you know, uh, we either protect or help other people like minimize their pain. Um, so I think that's incredible. Um, so what what is I, I, I'm really curious. Mental health, again, is another one of these conversations that uh, shows up in the black community, uh, particularly um, probably not often enough. And uh, but I do think things are you know improving uh, the, the stigma around mental health, I think, still is prevalent. But, you know, I, I feel like, uh, you know, 2022 is a lot better than 2002 when it comes to, you know, even talking publicly, letting people know that you're in therapy. Uh, do you see that yourself? Like, do you feel like uh, the mental health conversation um, just within the Black community is trending in the right direction? I do believe that it's trending in the right direction. I will be honest and say that I have still seen a lot of challenges, but it's not necessarily that the Black community is not starting to be more aware, but it's the resources that are available, or lack of resources that are available for the Black community. It's still a lot of Black people that uh, do not have insurance, that do not have the f finances. I'm sorry, the finances. It's just a lot more to the picture than just you know, um, you know, understanding mental health, which is why I also with my nonprofits provide some free counseling services. Yeah, I, I, I see that. And even just like navigating, I know, um, you know, uh, having access to the right insurance plan, making sure that you can actually find a provider. Uh, and then I, I know it's not just, you know, finding a, um, a mental health professional sometimes, but it's also finding like the right fit for you can also be very, very challenging. So uh, you bring up some really incredible points. 
uh, who are the people that you are most um, interested in talking to right now? Um, of course, you're doing great work, you know, in your home state of Georgia. Um, I know you're talking to like law enforcement and other communities, but in terms of organizations or just uh, people in general, like who are you most interested in speaking to? I have two, if I be honest. The 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 first one, honestly, I, if I could help the police to understand more about how to properly handle people that are suffering with mental illness to avoid people being hurt, killed. That is something I would love to do more trainings for the police force. That's one community. The other community, because I've, I've dove so much into my women and my nonprofit focused on them for about seven years. And now we've branched off and added an entity called Brothers Deserve a Chance for Men because I want to make sure that men understand it's okay to be vulnerable and it's okay to show your emotions and we support you. Wow. Very cool. Very cool. Brothers to serve a chance, right? Yeah. I, um, that's the name of the organization. Brothers, yes. to, Brothers to serve a chance. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we definitely want to get that information out. And so, and that's what goes back to what you were saying before. Um, sometimes we could look out in the world and just say, oh, well, there's just not enough resources. There's not enough help. There aren't enough uh, wraparound services to support a, a specific population. And then here, you know, we have, you know, a person like you, Sasha, who, uh, says, okay, well, let me go and create capacity uh, to, to help and to serve. So I really, really love that. Uh, we're coming to the end of the conversation. Of course, if you want to connect with uh, Sasha, there are so many. I, I know just looking at the comments, uh, we have a, a robust network of uh, mental health um, practitioners um, from across the industry here in BSN. Um, that I'm sure would love to connect with you as well. Um, but, you know, folks uh, in those two target markets that you mentioned, if, if that is you, uh, please make sure that you uh, connect with her, blackspeakersnetwork.com forward slash find a speaker. Uh, but I'll give you the last word, Sasha. Uh, in your opinion, you know, what is the most important thing that you want your, your um, audience to remember about you and the work that you're doing? The, the most important thing that I want to say to the audience is I know that there's a fire burning in you. It's something that you want to accomplish in your life. Do not stop. Do not let anything stop you, hold you back or break you because you deserve to be gentle with yourself and accomplish whatever it is that you desire in your life. Well said. Well said. Well, Sasha, I appreciate you again. Um, I'm in awe. I, I when every time I talk to people like you, I'm just like, I feel kind of lazy. I'm like, you're not I'm lazy. Not, Look like at I'm not you. Going to know. <laughs> <laughs> you're not lazy. Uh, but we'll all should be operating in our zone of genius. And I think you're doing that. Uh, so thank you so much. And of course, thanks for being part of the Black Speakers Network community. Again, thank you. Have a good one.